So it's fantastic that even in the middle of bloody Texas, they were having this fantastic conversation about British Alison Bachelor cartoons, you know? And what was important about that was, of course, for me, it was, a, it was a way of trying to excavate history. And kind of the whole histories of animated cartoons are very important. We're recovering the, the history of animation, and that's really feeding into a whole range of recoveries, different artists, different ways of approaching animation. So that's an important project. But one of the most important projects I think I've done in recent times is the one that really Rose has picked up on, which is reimagining animation. Now, I work with a guy called Johnny Harstoff. I don't know whether, whether you know Johnny, but Johnny's really a fantastic, fantastic graphic designer, fantastic filmmaker, kind of an iconoclast guy. Very funny, brilliant thinker. But what he did was bring me three modes of, of thought. Dazzling, original, interesting thought thought that you needed to map somewhere to try and you know validate it but it was but it stood up and absolutely incomprehensible incom rubbish and it was brilliant the incomprehensible rubbish was just as useful to me in trying to rethink what animation might be over and beyond animation cinema how it was reinventing genres how it was basically delivered a platform. You know, platform was an extraordinary experience and I took many of the people's work from that, that uh, uh, event into this book. Got these artists talking about this, talking about their work, set alongside more traditional kind of uh, filmmakers, but people who were pushing the boundaries. Uh, obviously, uh, Marjan Satrapi, for example, in Persepolis, and kind of different ways that children's program was operating ways the documentary was operating, people like Pierre Herbert in a live context, all these kind of factors, but also pushing out to what new technologies were creating outside animation cinema and outside animation installation to really challenge the boundaries of where animation might be located and all of its different kind of principles. And what's been wonderful about it is that I've got so many comments and emails from the arts community, more of an arts community, saying to me, this is a book that joins up the arts community with traditional models of animation. So it's been really flattering for me and quite extraordinary, I would say. So I hope that anybody who's interested in that, that might be the really pertinent book for this one, because it really does cross boundaries or attempt to cross boundaries, and in attempting to cross boundaries, inviting us to think differently about practice, about theory, and about the way in which this kind of work can offer us views about humanity, you know? One of the biggest things that sometimes we lose sight of the content. We lose sight of the idea of what are we doing this for? And one of the biggest reasons that we should do things, in my view, is to try and say something cogent and pertinent and incisive about the way we live and how we live and why our intrinsic humanity matters. And I think the animation community, I have to say, in the whole of my life, has really embraced that and always been about that. And the people that I've found in the animation scholarly community and the animation practice community have always given that to me. They've always given that sense of love and care and affection and a deep-rooted care about humanity. That's important, that's vital, and our art, you know, in being geared that way, can only benefit other people. And that, I want to thank all of you for that. Many people out there have made that contribution. It's a wonderful thing to have. So.